I just had a really fascinating conversation with a friend of mine who is in the world of philanthropy. Part of his job is to raise money and get volunteers for things. And he asked me if I wanted to volunteer for his organization. And my answer was, <laughs> oh, sweetheart, because I am right now very busy. I'm, this is why there haven't been videos in a while. I'm a little too busy. Um, and then I said, you know, this is interesting because you took that note very graciously, as he did. And I am in the business of teaching people how to say no. And I go to conventions and I try to teach people how to accept a no, because until you have those skills, it's very difficult to interact with other humans in a way that's not dangerous and toxic, right? And I said, what training have you gotten that helps you? Because surely there must be training in the world for people who want to do this kind of work, right? And so we started talking about it. And he was talking about the process of learning to have multiple asks and learning to have the right ask. And, um, and some of it applied like the idea of understanding enough about the person you're asking something from to be likely to hit something, hit on something, you'll get a yes. Uh, another technique was keep asking. So if, if, if it's a no to a hundred thousand dollars, maybe it's a yes to 50 or a yes to, maybe it's a yes to uh, time volunteering or whatever. And so always end on a yes, which I like, but also getting a bunch of repeated asks is not an ideal consent practice, right? Um, but the thing that stuck out to me and the thing I wanted to make a video about was the fundamental principle that in his work where he's asking people for something, what is most important is the ongoing relationship with that donor, that volunteer, that supporter. It is not about the outcome of any one ask. It is about there being a sustained, positive relationship that everybody feels good about. And when I think about some of the work that I've done teaching consent practices to individuals who are hoping to date or hoping to interact with someone physically um, at, at a party or starting to find a way to interact with someone um, that they don't know well, Sometimes the goal is not an ongoing positive relationship in the mind of somebody asking, right? It's possible for somebody to go into, say, a date thinking, my goal is to get laid. And if I never hear from this person again, that's going to be fine with me. And that's a setup for bad experiences all around. And I'm not saying you never get to have a one night stand if you're consent positive. What I'm saying is you want your one night stand to think positively of you in the future, right? Um, and when we look at stories like what happened with Aziz Ansari, and he's like, well, did I really push the boundary? You know, it was fine. I, I'm sorry you were uncomfortable. And, um, but he had a goal. The interaction as described was that he had a goal, which was not for this person to think well of him in a week. It was to have a certain physical interaction that evening. And that process of deciding beforehand how this should come, how somebody else should behave to make you happy, isn't a great practice. The better practice is to be open to co-creating an experience that will make you both happy. And maybe you will learn things in the process about yourself or about the other person that you weren't expecting. And when we are open to that idea where the goal is an experience that feels good, and I'm not just meaning physically, but physically, psychologically, emotionally, to everyone all the way through the process, and will continue to feel good when thought back on in memory. If that is our goal, as opposed to, I'm going to get consent so they can't call the cops on me later, right? You see that shift there? Um, I think that's one of the puzzle pieces that we sometimes miss in our popular culture. And I had that thought and I wanted to share it with you. Thanks for listening.